I wanted to give you a little report from our trip to Washington, D.C. Earlier this week, I was up there for three days. And, you know, here we are in 2022. And to some degree, the Capitol's back open. I had to make appointments to go in and uh, meet with congressmen. You had to um, wait downstairs outside the buildings, um, have a staff member come down, bring you inside the building, bring you right to the office. Then you were escorted back outside, uh, very secure and so forth. And uh, it was a good week. And you see on the, the picture, we had a service outside of the Capitol and Congressman Mike Garcia spoke to us out there. And of course, uh, Pastor Mike Creed and Pastor Paul Chapel, Dr. David Gibbs. Um, you know, we had really good speakers, Pastor Brad Wells. I'm usually just the song leader and um, just the helper. Uh, but I'd say that we really, really had a good week um, at Capital Connection. And, you know, we uh, we sang outside of the, the Supreme Court building. We had Seasons of Prayer. Congressman Trent Franks talked to us about uh, the life issue and the work he's done. And, you know, we've got about 120 members of Congress that know the Lord, that, I mean, are saved. Um, and that's wonderful to have that many Christians in office. Of course, we like to, every, personally, I want every member of Congress to be saved. I want everybody in the entire world to be saved. That's God's desire. Jesus died for all. All should receive Jesus Christ. God doesn't make people get saved, but the offer is for everyone. But I'm encouraged having gone to Washington, D.C., and we did see one man receive Christ as Savior while right there in D.C. We were giving out gospel tracts, and we thank the Lord for a precious soul receiving Christ. But I thought it uh, would help you to just hear that uh, there is an awakening going on um, probably eight or 10 or 11 or 12, maybe, uh, different senators and federal uh, U.S. representatives that met with personally and, uh, and talked with them and prayed with them. Um, you know, it's really a spiritual war that's going on in America and around the world. The devil has a plan. He'd love all people to deny Christ and... Um, and, you know, just do worldly and wicked uh, debauchery. But God has a plan too. And there's a lot of folk looking to God. And so I'm so happy that this week I got to go to our nation's capital. I'm glad there's lots of scriptures right there in the nation's capital. I love being a, an American. I'm even happier to be a Christian. But I'm happy to be American. And I love the freedom. And we believe freedom comes from God. And we believe it's inconceivable that God would ordain government and God's people not be involved. So I want you to consider what your role is in um, helping America come back to God. We've never been a 100% Christian nation, meaning everybody in the whole country saved. That's never, never been. But we've had a lot of Christians and we've had a lot of influence of the Bible upon our society, and we want that again. I want that again. So look at that picture. We're outside of the United States Capitol with freedom and uh, praying to God and singing Amazing Grace and singing the National Anthem and singing My Country, Tis of Thee and, uh, and singing the Old Rugged Cross. It was wonderful hearing the Old Rugged Cross being sung right there at the nation's capital, all with all those uh, preachers and staff members, and um, you, you in the picture that I've got um, posted up, you just see a, a little portion of the crowd standing on the steps. But uh, it was my joy to go there. I've had a busy week. Oh, my. Um, four different churches this week. I started the week. <laughs> I started the week in Wilmington, North Carolina. Wonderful church there. Good services. I preached several times on Sunday. Then I drove to Washington, D.C., and, of course, had nighttime services at a wonderful church there, Independent Baptist Church in Clinton, Maryland, and during the daytime having services and being up back and forth at the Capitol. 
Then Thursday night in Belmont, West Virginia, at First Baptist Church, I got to be one night at the missions conference. Oh, it was wonderful at the missions conference there. What's the mission? Taking the gospel to the world. <laughs> and um, and now this weekend, started Friday night, um, revival meeting in uh, Archdale, North Carolina, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so uh, four different churches, four different cities, 1,400 miles of driving this week. But seeing souls saved and seeing the level of righteousness raised up in our country, it's going to take some real work. I have to remind myself sometimes that I'm a soldier. Byron Fox, get out of bed and get something done. Read your Bible. Pray. Get in the uh, fight for truth and righteousness, Byron Fox. I have to give myself a little pep talks at times. At times, I, I try not to listen to myself. I try to talk to myself. Uh, that seems to do better for me. But I want you to make today count. Would you do that? Tell people about the Lord. Read the Bible. Pray. Be in church. Uh, be in church on Sunday and be back Sunday night if there's an evening service or an afternoon service. Go to all the services. Uh, Wednesday night, if there's revival meeting, go every service. And uh, during the preaching, um, as the Lord would lead, say amen. Say, say praise the Lord. Those are good Bible words. And uh, be encouraged. Uh, I, there's nothing for a Christian to be discouraged about. So, well, the economy's bad. The gas prices are up. The price of bacon is up. Yeah, all that's true. <laughs> but God who feeds the birds, he feeds all of his believers too, as he sees fit. And so uh, we trust the Lord. So uh, let's do something in the cause of Christ today. And I thought you might want to hear a little bit about um, Washington, D.C. May God bless.